this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the NZXT N5Z690. In this video, I'm going to unbox and set up this motherboard and talk to you about the highlights of it. I've used this in a recent build of the NZXT H7 case, and I'll leave that video linked in the description so you can find out more about that. But here I want to talk to you about the setup process and the highlights and features of this motherboard. Now it includes a number of different things that make it interesting and it is an Intel Z690 chipset which is LGA1700 but it will work with both 12th gen and 13th gen CPUs. Now the CPU compatibility list on the website says it'll only work with 12th gen but with a BIOS update to version 9 which is something that I did recently, it will work with 13th gen, and I've confirmed that with an i5 13600K CPU. So I'm able to report that happily it works with both setups. Now this is a really affordable motherboard with a number of interesting highlights to it. It has Wi-Fi 6E connectivity, and I'll show you the included things for that in a second. It also has multiple M2 drives as well, and there are screws included in the box for the installation of those. So if you're using multiple NVMe drives, then this is a good option. And actually a very affordable board, which has up to four slots on it. So you can actually use a mass of NVMe storage if that's something you want to do, which makes it really appealing. The other things included in the box are fairly basic. So you've got a number of M2 screws, the wireless antennas, and four SATA cables. So you have two 90 degree cables and two 180 degree cables. These are for connecting up obviously SSDs and hard disk drives and having those connections. And then as I said, you've got these wireless antennas. Now it has both ethernet and Wi-Fi 6E connectivity and you have those antennas to screw into the back in order to get it working properly. And you can download the drivers and things from the NZXT website to get all that stuff working too. This is an Intel board. So I have some tips on what to do once you've set it up. I'll link to that video in the description. But as you can see, a number of USB ports on the back, quite a few. And it is a fairly basic setup, fairly basic board, but it is really affordable. At this price, you're getting a reasonable board for your money. It's not like beautiful in any way, but it is reasonably well built and it has great connectivity in a number of different ways. You got, there are some things that are lacking though. For example, there's only one USB port down the bottom, as you can see there. You can also see there is a Wi-Fi adapter, so you can actually see where the Wi-Fi adapter is in the middle of the board next to the CMOS battery. And you'll find there's only one cover for M2 ports. So the top M2 slot is under this cover here with its own thermal sticker on the back of it. And the installation process is fairly straightforward, but as I said, there's actually four slots on here for installing M2 drives on it. So you do have a lot of connectivity options, so you can connect up multiples. It's also worth noting that this is a Z690 motherboard, so it is the latest generation, but it does work with DDR4 RAM, which is an important point of note because it doesn't work with DDR5. So if you are thinking about purchasing that, just bear that in mind as well. You can see the installation process for installing the drives here. And I used a Kingston Fury Renegade drive for this one, which is a fairly straightforward installation and easy setup and gives good speeds too with PCIe Gen 4 connectivity. So you've got plenty of good speed there. This board was made in collaboration with ASRock. So you've got some pretty decent setup reasonable overclocking tools and other things within the BIOS and fairly straightforward management with NZXT's own CAM software as well. So there's plenty of good options there. One of the things that I will note is that the BIOS version on this motherboard when I got it was version 4 and there's now version 9 available. So it's probably worthwhile updating that, especially if you're thinking of using later generation CPUs. So you can see some of the installation points the M2 drives here. I've already installed one on the top. I'm demonstrating the other places you can install one. So you can see there's another one that fits below the X16 slot here. There's also another one at the bottom as well. So you have plenty of points for mounting multiple drives. Is that something you want to do, which is worthwhile if you're thinking of installing OS on one, games on another, and uh, other things as well. You can see, again, that Wi-Fi 6E adapter just below this M2 drive. So it's visible on here, which is unusual. You don't usually see that showing up on other motherboards that I've seen. Now, another thing that's unusual about this board is the final M2 port is actually on the rear in the bottom. So if you're wondering where it was, if you look at it initially, you'll find it around the back. All the screws are included in the box for installing the M2 drives, and you'll find the standoffs pre-installed, and then you just need to screw the 
drives down to install them in there. Straightforward installation. It's nice to see those screws included. If you lose them, there are other options you can purchase via Amazon. Now, when I initially started this board up, I wanted to use an Intel 12th Gen 12700K CPU for it, just for testing purposes and see how it got on in terms of performance, but also then to move to a 13th generation. Now, as I noted already, they say in the CPU compatibility list that that won't work, the 13th Gen, but it does work if you update to the lightest BIOS. And you can see some of the installation steps here. Another thing, obviously, this is LGA 1700, which means that you will need the latest coolers or an adapter if you're trying to use one of old coolers. So if you're using a cooler you already have, you may well need an adapter because the holes are in different places for it. I've done a video separately on this and what it means and the implications of it. But the installation is, as you'd expect, fairly straightforward. Interesting points here that you will see as we go through these steps, and one of the things I found while building it, is you are limited in some of the connectivity in terms of the placement of things. For example, this board will support RGB connections. So it does both have 12 volt and five volt RGB headers on the board, but they are positioned in unusual places. In the top right, you'll have two NZXT connectors for RGB, but in the bottom left, you'll find the standard sort of ARGB headers, but there's only two of them and they are down the bottom. And I'll show you why that might be a problem later on. For this build, I'm also using Kingston Fury Beast DDR4 RAM to give it a nice RGB glow that you'll see at the end. Also, just because of the speed and capabilities of it. Again, I'll leave all the specs in the description so you can find out more about that. And other interesting points of note here is you will see that they are quite limited in SATA connections. So there's actually only four SATA connections on here, which is worth noting. The installation of the RAM, if you're going through this install process, you need to install in A2 and B2 to install your RAM in those positions. So I'm just showing some of the steps here during the setup so you can get an idea of what it's like and what you should do if you're thinking about purchasing it. Obviously, you could fill up with four sticks if you wanted to. I'm sticking for two for this build just for ease of building and other reasons. Now, you wouldn't actually do this at this point, but just to demonstrate, these are the wi-fi six antennas that you'd screw into the back so once it's built and fully in the case and ready to go put these in and install them if you're planning on using the wi-fi because it'll ensure a strong signal and make sure you're getting the signal you want if you're not using ethernet which frankly you're better off using anyway but if you want to use them make the most of that wi-fi 6e and then obviously using those antennas is an important point of it now in some of these close-up shots you'll see some of what i was talking about so the various different connection options and the fans and other things so at the bottom here, there's only one USB connection, which is worth bearing in mind, I think, because if you're doing a bigger build and you're using things like fan controllers or various other RGB adapters and things like that, you need multiple USB connections. You only have one, which is unusual and unfortunate. Usually you'll find two or more. And this build is only one, so just bear that in mind. You may need a Y splitter or an extra adapter to do it. There are plenty of system fan headers, and you'll find a couple here in the bottom right, for example, for installing fans, but otherwise you're fairly limited. As I said already, you also only have four SATA ports potentially, so you can only store four drives. I didn't manage to test out to see whether all of these drives would work if you also filled all the M2 ports. Sometimes you'll find in some builds that if you've installed multiple M2 ports, you can't also use multiple drives uh, in terms of SATA and hard disk drives. So keep that in mind too. Now for this build, I'm using a deep cool CPU tower cooler. I've done a video on that separately, which only has one RGB connection. The reason I wanted to show this and the demonstration of it is because of the single RGB connection that runs off of it. So this was actually my biggest complaint about this board, although you could argue that it's also the cooler that's the problem. The RGB cable from that needs to run to the five volt RGB header, and that is located at the bottom of the motherboard which means that the cable is actually too short to run across the back, down the back of the case and to the bottom of the motherboard to connect up there. So you're only you're quite limited. In other boards that I've tried, you usually find an RGB header at the top as well. If there had been one at the top, it would have made life a lot easier. Now, it, there are RGB connections for NZXT products. So if you use NZXT things, 
that's just fine because they're at the top right it's a bit easier to access you do however have obviously the connections for your usb a and usb c front panel connections so there's plenty of connectivity there and you'll note there's actually two usb connections one by the 24 pin and one further down at 90 degree angle in the other direction a bit lower than that as well so there's actually two lots of usb a front panels so there's actually a mix of interesting setup here in terms of how many things you can connect to it so a lack of rgb but a mass of front panel usb connections so if you're using a bigger case that has four for example usb front panels externally you might find that you can easily connect that up to this motherboard which is fairly unusual usually you only find one so it's unusual to see two so it's pretty cool that you have that connection there so you're getting actually a really good mix of things for your money on this board because it basically offers up multiple features that you'd see on more expensive boards like multiple m2 connections for example and the connections for multiple front panel USB-A but lacks in other areas so one internal USB connection is pretty lacking sadly and obviously limited with that RGB connection as I said but the finished product looks pretty nice I think and it sets off nicely in terms of the design overall aesthetic when put inside a black case for example because it's obviously got a mix of nice black and white aesthetics which go pretty well with the part slab to have chosen for this build as well so the white cooler and the white ram set off with the overall black finish of it during testing i found it to be pretty stable as well i ran obviously as i said two different cpus on it and did some benchmarks tests on it which i've left in the cooler video if you want to check those out and see what the performance was there and I found it really stable for gaming and other things. I used an Intel Arc A770 GPU during testing on this one and managed to run games at 4K and with a good smooth experience across the board as well on a variety of different games. So actually the experience has been really good and for the money, it's a really good motherboard. Really affordable, easy to set up and plenty of good highlights to it as well. So pretty wonderful in a number of different ways. If you want to find out more about the specs and other things, be sure to check out all the information in the description. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or head over to Discord and say hello and ask me over there. Thanks very much for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.